hello everyone back again here let's start converting this bike into an e-bike I wanted to start with the rear wheel here and motor the gears have to line up properly with your rear derailleur here let's zoom in on this rear derailleur Installing this rear wheel was a challenge because the main reason is lining up these gears on the rear derailleur and on the wheel itself, the gear set here. I ended up going through a few derailleurs before I found the right one that would work. When the spoke broke on the old wheel, it actually went into the chain and bent the chain and inevitably destroyed this rear derailleur here. They no longer make this rear derailleur no more, but they make a updated version, which I bought. It took me a few attempts of buying a few different derailleurs before I found one that actually would line up with the gears here. As you see, the gears line up perfectly. Getting the spacing here also between the frame and the gear and the hub of the wheel to line up with the chain was also another challenge. I had to buy special locking washers. These washers on the rear hub here are locking washers and made specifically for e-bikes where there's no movement or play between the frame of the bike and the hub. After aligning the wheel in the frame, you're going to want to take this main wire that's for the controller and the battery pack here, and you want to run it somewhere safe. I chose to run the wire up the back of the frame here, underneath, to the back where the battery pack's going to sit on this back frame here. This back frame should be able to support the weight of the battery pack. You're going to have to disassemble your gears and your old brake handles here because these new brake handles have a sensor in it to disengage the controller and motor for the e-bike. I chose a thumb style throttle here so that I can have the gear selector still and also the handle grip here still fit. Everything's really comfortable. The next step here is to secure this 48 volt battery pack to this rear frame here battery I chose was a 48 volt Lion battery all Samsung cells it's a 20 amp hour battery the battery pack here has a mounting bracket with some holes in it here what I'll end up having to do so I have to drill some holes put some bolts through here so that I can secure this battery pack when you're driving around on this bike here you don't want that battery pack to bounce around at all. Next I installed the digital display and I also put this protective cover around the wiring. I installed this cool light on the rear here. It's got turn signals. Pretty cool, huh? And right. This cool light is equipped with lasers on each side. Pretty cool, huh? Well, with everything installed, I have to wire this controller up now. And I wanted to talk about this controller a little bit here. There's a few issues going on here. I really don't like the ring terminal connector, so I'm going to pull my soldering gun out and then solder some wires instead of having these ring terminals here. And also the throttle here is different than the plug for here. What I'll have to do is solder these three wires, which is a negative and a positive and a signal wire here, to work with this to be a controller here because the throttle that came with it just isn't going to work for this bike. I'm going to use half of these plugs 
but the other half I'm not going to be able to use because the length of the wiring here is not going to be able to reach the pouch that holds the controller here. This plug here is also different than an XT60, which I'll end up having to solder an XT60 connector on. Because on this side is a female XT60 connector. Let's get the portable power station out and spend a few hours here soldering and wiring this up. All the chain and gearing now is right and works correctly. All the gears switch. To get all that aligned was pretty difficult. Now that's all mechanically there, I'm uh, ready to wire it up and get this thing fully charged.